Hey everybody, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and I'm coming to you from my spring 2020 veggie garden and I wanted to make this video because I find a lot more people are interested in my gardening videos, starting seeds, and so I thought I would put together this video to share with you three things that I wish I knew before I started trying to grow food. All right, so the first thing I wish I knew was how important it is to understand the climate and the soil of the exact area where you plan to garden. And by that, I mean, when I first started off, even though I live about 13 to 15 miles north of the nearest uh, bigger city, I was in the gardening groups and gathering information off the internet and stuff for people that lived a little bit further south than me. And so I'm thinking, surely we're in the same county, we're in the same area, it's not that far away. I should be gardening the same way that I see that these people are, and that's not necessarily the case. My temperature, the climate, how cold it gets here in the winter, just being 12 to 15 miles north of another place is absolutely different, as well as the soil. Most of Florida has really sandy soil where I would see in all these posts, people adding all these amendments and having to add stuff that holds moisture, and that was absolutely the cause of a lot of the mistakes that I made early on gardening out here because we are, uh, our property itself backs up to wetlands. Meaning, although it is dry here, if we get a ridiculous amount of rain, it will flood. My soil is not sandy at all. It holds a lot of moisture and it's an absolutely different type of soil to what people just 10 or 12 miles south of me are gardening. So you have to understand the climate meaning both the temperature, right? If in the winter time it drops 10 degrees lower than another area nearby, you better be ready for that if you need to cover up some crops uh, from the frost or the hard freezes, which we have to do here. And a lot of people don't even think about that. Like I live in Florida. It does, does it even freeze there? It absolutely does. And we've had some winters here where a couple nights it'll even get as low as 20 degrees, 18 degrees. And it's pretty crazy to think because nobody really thinks about temperatures getting that cold in Florida, right? So make sure that you do your research, contact your local extension office, contact your local gardening groups, as close as you can get to where you are. Another thing that I was glad I ended up doing because I couldn't figure out why all my plants were dying was because everybody would say, hey, it's really hot, it's dry, make sure that you're watering, make sure that you're watering. Well, for the soil that we have out here, I don't ever really have to garden unless we go I mean, water. I don't ever have to water unless we go weeks and weeks without rain because as soon as it rains, the soil here holds a lot of that moisture in. So I couldn't be listening to all the other stuff that I was hearing and following and that caused me to fail at a lot of my gardening attempts, okay? So test your soil. A friend of mine later on, once I was kind of starting to figure things out, uh, once I told her where we lived, she was very familiar with the area and she said, oh, you have amazing soil out there. And so I was asking her, you know, well, what do you mean? So she says, well, take your soil to get tested at the university. And I did. And that's when I was actually able to see in a chart and understand what the nutrients were in the soil, what I needed to add, what I did not need to add. Um, and so that's probably going to be my, my tips so that you can avoid those mistakes is contact your local extension office so you can find out more about gardening in your area. Uh, find out about the temperatures, the highs and the lows for the year in your specific area, like right where you live, your zip code. Okay. And get your soil tested before you just start getting information off the internet and saying, oh, I need to buy, you know, a truckload of horse manure or cow manure because I need to amend my soil or I need to get a lot of this and a lot of that. Understand what you're working with first so that you can save yourself time and money and only amend or only add and do the things that you absolutely have to do once you have that information. The second thing I wish I knew was how much even similar vegetables and herbs will vary as far as what they require in terms of light, care, water, all that kind of stuff. So at the beginning when you start, I know a lot of people are tempted to put in like 25 different crops. <laughs> and I was the same way, but it will quick, quickly um, overwhelm you because you can't really keep track. You haven't uh, begun to understand how that plant grows in your area. Is it in too shady of a spot? Is it getting way too much sun? And so it's kind of like you have to learn about each thing that you plant little by little. No matter how many books you read or how many blog posts or watch as much stuff, you have to kind of experience it in order, in order to gather how well a specific variety is going to do 
for you in your setup and your area and all the, I mean, there's so many factors that affect how well a plant will do that you can't just assume, hey, I have soil, I have water, I have sun, it's gonna grow. That's not really how gardening works. A lot of this stuff is experimental. Um, most of us are gonna be learning hands-on. Uh, you might grow three different types of tomatoes and only one takes off and the other two don't do well at all for you. Then that's kind of how you figure out like, okay, in future years, I'm gonna plant more plants of that one variety that I know did really well for me with minimal care or whatever the case may be. But you gotta learn little by little. So I would recommend, and I wish I would have done this, is to start off with maybe three to five different types of vegetables that you like to eat. This is huge, and that's another tip there, is don't plant stuff just because it does well. If you're not gonna eat it, it's kind of a waste of time, money, uh, uh, and effort, right? Um, we did that early on. We planted a bunch of turnips. Everybody in this area grows turnips. They love them some turnips. I don't care for turnips. So I'd have a whole row of turnips and I tried to cook them five, six, seven different ways and it was like, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna grow turnips anymore. So um, it's cool as an experiment to kind of learn and uh, figure out what you need to do to grow those crops. But if you're not gonna eat it, don't waste your time, right? So I would say start off with three to five different types of plants. Uh, that you want to eat, that you want to grow. Don't always just go by what people in your area are saying. So for example, for us here, in our area, a lot of people, when we get beginning gardeners, will kind of tell them to like, just grow this one tomato variety, little cherry, like Everglades tomato variety, they tell you, just grow this one, because all the other ones, you're not gonna get them. The heat, the bugs, the humidity here in North Central Florida, is just too much, you're not gonna have a good crop of tomatoes. Well, if I would have listened to all those people discouraging me from growing tomatoes, I love me some tomatoes, uh, I wouldn't have all the tomato plants that I have here, okay? I'm growing about, I don't even know, seven, eight different varieties. They all have fruit on them, they're doing amazing and it's kind of like a shocker to everybody, but it comes with doing your research, caring for the plants, and for me, it's worth the effort, the time, uh, and, and the time spent gathering the knowledge so that I can get my tomatoes. <laughs> I like big tomatoes, I like small ones, I'm trying different colors, uh, tomatoes, ones that are yellow, ones that are like a peach or apricot colored, uh, some little small cherry varieties, some larger pink varieties. I don't care how the tomato comes, I love tomatoes. So. I am able to grow these here. Um, there's definitely some things that I would change for next season and that's kind of how gardening works, right? You do something, it works great. You jot it down and tell yourself, this is exactly how I'm gonna do it again next year. That's usually not the case. We're always trying to get better, change things up, make it a little bit more efficient, um, increase your yield for the next year. So I think it's important to know that there's a lot of work that's gonna go into it and everything that you do in your gardening journey is uh, knowledge that you're gaining to get better and better and better and better, okay? So I definitely do not um, consider myself an expert. As a matter of fact, I would probably consider myself a beginner <laughs> in gardening, whereas when people look at my garden, they don't really think that that's the case, but it's because I'm always willing to learn. I'm trying to experiment. I like to play a little bit too with the time uh, of the year when I plant things. I like to push the envelope a little bit and put some things in the ground that might be a little too late for Florida. Uh, and it's just part of the fun for me, okay? So now I'm over here at the pumpkin patch area of my garden, and I wanted to share with you the third thing that I wish I knew before I started trying to grow food, and that is uh, I wish I knew exactly how big some of these plants get and what exactly is the proper care for them in order to allow them to grow and have the space that they need and allow them to put on the fruit or whatever the crop is that you're getting off of that plant uh, in a way that makes it easy for me to grab and uh, to keep it from rotting on the ground, right? So some of these things, uh, for example, pumpkins, you can see all this is three pumpkin plants. Um, and I feel like a lot of us, especially when we start off, we put a little seed in a cup with some soil, water, put it in a sunny window, and it sprouts, and you are just jumping for joy because you see life, you see that it sprouted, you're doing something right. But a lot of people don't end up having success because they are limiting the plant itself. So things that need to grow bigger roots or they need to expand and move, and people are keeping them like in these really small, confined spaces, you are not gonna get what you hope to get from that crop, okay? So pumpkins, for example, some people let them sprawl on the ground like I have here. Others will trellis them up like I have this trellis back here. 
This is a variety that I haven't grown before. Um, it's a seminal pumpkin variety that's supposed to do really well in our area. It's my first year growing it. It looks to be doing really well. And so I figured I would put this trellis up to get it to trellis up on top here. So you have to keep in mind if you live in a really small space or you have some type of container gardening area on a porch or something because you don't have a yard or room to put these things in the ground, you need to do your research to see how can I grow vertically because I can't grow horizontally across the land like I have here. So part of that has to do with researching those few crops that you're going to start off with. Start small, understand them, maybe try to grow two different varieties of pumpkins, two different varieties of watermelon and see how they do for you if one does better than the other or if they both flop check and see did you plant at the right time it's like a lot of reading and understanding the plants themselves and how they are in the environment you know you start to see little holes then you need to flip it over and figure out well what bug or worm is eating my stuff and figure out well what can i treat it with we do everything organic here so we're always looking up organic um, insecticides or things that we can use that are all natural and organic in our garden since i'm feeding my kids from this garden. So it's a lot of research, trial and error, and experimenting really when it comes to growing food. But those are three things that I wish I knew before I started growing food. And let's recap them again. Let's see if I can remember them. One was understanding your climate, right? The temperature, the weather, how cold it gets in the winter in your area and testing your soil. So you know what you're working with right off the bat. Two is to start small. Okay, it can be really overwhelming if you're trying to grow 17 different types of vegetables. You're not going to be able to spend enough time on one in order to understand it and the variety. And remember, you can grow cucumbers, but they're not all necessarily going to grow the same. A lot of them can grow similarly, but there may be ones that like more water versus other varieties that like to be a little bit drier. Some could be more drought tolerant than others. Like all that stuff, you need to research the variety that you're planning to grow so you can understand and see how it applies or what you might need to change to grow those successfully in your area. Okay. And three is do more research. Understand the crop that you are growing, okay? I wish I knew more about trellising, vertical gardening, things that were flopping over. I wish I knew, oh, it would help if you gave it something to help support the plant and then help support the heavy fruit. My bigger tomato plants that have really large tomatoes that are gonna get to be, hopefully, 12 to 16 ounces in size. It's a chunky slicing tomato. I need to give them a little bit more support than a super, super teeny tiny, like a Matt's wild cherry tomato. And so you need to help them somehow, right? There are container garden ideas where you can put a trellis right in a big container and grow your tomatoes in there. You don't have to have land like this, but all that information is gonna come to you through research. Uh, and that's why I kinda wanna share my experience here on my YouTube channel as well, because watching people on their YouTube channel, they're sharing with you the successes, the failures, what they're gonna do differently, what failed for them last year. And that is a great way for you to access this information and get the research, like do the research for it, because you're seeing through somebody else's eyes um, how they failed and what they can do better. But again, remember, if they live in a different area than you, it could be something totally different than what you might experience on your own. So I hope that these tips help you out and that you give it a try. Go ahead and grab some seed starting mix and some seeds and go ahead and start. Now, if you're not starting from seed or maybe it's later in the season and it's too late for you to start seeds in your area, go by your local grocery store, feed and seed stores. Uh, even a big box store will sell you some plant starts that you can get started with already. And if it's later in the season, that way you don't have to set yourself back a couple of months trying to grow it from seed. All right, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends who are trying to get into gardening now, and uh, let me know what other types of gardening videos and tips and stuff you'd like to see me share with you right here on my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on my future videos, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.